His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa returned home today from an official visit to the United Kingdom in which His Majesty met with Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and head of the Commonwealth and British Prime Minister Theresa May. During the visit, His Majesty reviewed the friendly Bahraini British relations and ways to develop and reinforce bilateral cooperation in all fields, discussing a number of regional and international issues of interest to the two nations. His Majesty King Hamid then visited the United Arab Emirates to meet with UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Dubai ruler Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. Their Highnesses reviewed the deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and the UAE and discussed ways to further develop coordination regarding various current issues and developments in order to meet the best interests and stability of the two countries and the two brotherly peoples. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Lebanese President Michel Oun on the occasion of being elected by the Parliament as President of Lebanon. His Majesty affirmed that such a move will contribute in establishing security in Lebanon and safeguard that country from foreign interference, which impacts its progress march. His Majesty the King affirmed Bahrain's stance and support for Lebanon to safeguard its security and stability. His Majesty voiced hope for the brotherly relations between the two countries to elevate further for the benefits of the two countries and their peoples. His Majesty the King expressed his best wishes to President Michel Oun, wishing him every success in taking Lebanon towards further stability and prosperity. His Majesty also wished the people of Lebanon further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the Lebanese President Michel Oun on the occasion of being elected by the Parliament as President of Lebanon. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister expressed his good wishes for the Lebanese President with his mission to meet the aspirations of the people of Lebanon towards further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness affirmed Bahrain's keen desire to further enhance the brotherly relations with Lebanon, wishing the Republic of Lebanon further development. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister received at Gudabiyah Palace today the Council of Representatives Speaker Ahmed bin Ibrahim al Mullah, Shura Council Speaker Ali bin Salah al Salah, and a number of the Council's members and state officials. He expressed his pride in the strategic partnership between the government and the parliament. His Royal Highness affirmed the importance of the legislative authorities' members' role at the local and regional levels in the light of their endeavours to create robust relations with international parliaments, which in turn would strengthen the kingdom's relations with other countries. The MPs congratulated His Royal Highness for receiving the Grand Star in Gold of the Austrian Order of Merit from the Royal Habsburg family and Hollerbrunn City Council in Austria in appreciation for his efforts in protecting societies and his dedication in supporting peace and humanitarian charitable activities. The representatives and Shura Council speakers and members also praised His Royal Highness's keen efforts of maintaining peace on the regional and international levels. The Prime Minister reviewed with the audience regional and global developments where he emphasised the importance of economic and political cooperation which will enable the Arabian Gulf to compete internationally, particularly in the light of its economic qualifications and investment opportunities.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Al Ghadibiyah Palace today former Secretary General of the Arab League, Amr Musa, who is currently visiting the kingdom. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister praised the strategic role of Egypt at both regional and international levels. He highlighted existing Bahraini Egyptian bilateral relations, hailing the development of their joint cooperation at all levels. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also expressed appreciation to the role of the former Secretary in developing Arab joint cooperation and his continuous support as an Arab politician to Arab affairs. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting today at Gudabia Palace. The Prime Minister hailed the results of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa's visit to the United Kingdom, noting the meetings and talks held between His Majesty and Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland and the British Prime Minister Theresa May. The talks embodied the depth of the ties between the two countries and enhanced cooperation between them. The Cabinet went on to commend the historical bilateral ties with the United Kingdom, noting that the 200th anniversary of relations is being marked between the two countries. They also expressed their keenness to further enhance bilateral cooperation in various fields. His Royal Highness expressed thanks for the citizens' praise in regard to him being awarded the Grand Star in Gold of the Austrian Order of Merit, conferred upon him by the Habsburg Royal Family and Hollerbrunn City Council in Austria. The cabinet strongly condemned the criminal act of targeting Mecca conducted by the rebel militias in Yemen, urging to adopt a unified and firm Islamic position against those who carried out this act. It also expressed its support to all the efforts of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in combating all forms of terrorism. His Royal Highness gave orders to adopt a comprehensive vision in planning new cities, taking into account the provision of parks and entertainment landmarks that will act as outlets for the residents. He also directed to maintain the social fabric in the residential projects constructed in villages. His Royal Highness continued to fulfill the needs of the residents of Domestan from the Luisi residential project and to allocate residential units for Tubli residents from the Tubli residential project. He also directed the Ministry of Housing to expedite the allocation of residential units to residents of Bilad al-Qadim and al-Zinj. The Cabinet directed to limit the participation of the ministers in international events to those that bring practical benefits to the Kingdom in order to rationalise government spending and to optimise benefiting from international events. The Prime Minister then praised the results achieved by the students and schools participating in the Arab Reading Challenge competition, which was recently held in the United Arab Emirates, thanking the winners for their efforts in reaching such top positions. The Cabinet approved the plan of energy consumption rationalisation and benefiting from renewable energy and referred it to the Ministerial Committee for Urbanisation and Infrastructure. The Cabinet then approved a draft law regarding the ratification of a protocol between the Bahraini and Turkish governments to amend and update some of the principles in the agreement signed between them in October 26, 1998 regarding air services. An agreement on the avoidance of double taxation between Bahrain and the Kingdom of Spain was approved. The Cabinet then approved amending a draft law regarding mental health. The scheduled project for cooperation between Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates in the field of youth for the period from 2016 to 2018 was also approved by the Cabinet. Finally, the Cabinet reviewed four proposals from the Representatives Council regarding the new housing project's infrastructure, social housing programme age restrictions, municipalities and final examinations for the school year. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the Lebanese President, Michel Un, on the occasion of being elected by the Parliament as President of Lebanon. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince wished the Lebanese President success with his mission to meet the aspirations of the people of Lebanon towards further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness affirmed Bahrain's keen desire to further enhance the brotherly relations with Lebanon for the interests of the two countries. His Royal Highness wished the Republic of Lebanon further development and prosperity. 
Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, the seventh edition of the annual conference on effective partnership and information sharing for better humanitarian action was inaugurated in participation with the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, that's OCHA, and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation Humanitarian Funds, the OICHF, as well as the Royal Charity Organization. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the RCO, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, delivered a speech in which he affirmed Bahrain's keenness in providing support in all forms and bolstering global humanitarian efforts, as well as the aid of humanitarian organizations, which is based on the teaching and principles of Islam and the humanitarian bonds that ties the Kingdom of Bahrain with the rest of the world. His Highness also conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King, the Honorary Chairman of the RCO, and his wishes for the success of this conference. His Highness Sheikh Nasser addressed his deep appreciation towards the OCHA, the RCO and the OICHF for their generous efforts in organising this event in a time which the world is experiencing upheavals in many areas. He also valued the role of the United Nations and its different organs to coordinate and unify humanitarian efforts which results in creating channels through which aid can be delivered. His Highness lauded the distinguished presence of the participants from various countries, asserting the responsibilities of the public, private and the civil society institutions in upholding their roles of contributions in order to ease the struggles of the nations, whether from natural disasters, internal conflicts or wars. He also presented his award to Kuwait's Amiri Dewan advisor, the UN's Secretary Envoy for Humanitarian Affairs, Dr. Abdullah Al Matouk, in appreciation for his efforts in the areas of charity and humanitarian work. The United Nations Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator Stephen O'Brien presented His Highness Sheikh Nasser an appreciation award for his worldwide charity work, aiding the unfortunates. Malik al Shuli refugee in Zatari refugee camp and students in Bahrain's scientific complex talked about her experience studying in Bahrain schools and highlighted the role of these schools in raising her hopes of obtaining a strong education. This conference, actually, there is a lot of people who are counting on uh, its resolutions. Uh, at the moment of maximum crisis in the region, there is a high need to coordinate uh, the collaboration between the uh, donor uh, group and organization who are also delivering humanitarian aid. Uh, this, is, this will actually maximize the effectiveness uh, of humanitarian work. Uh, I uh, cannot uh, overemphasize also the importance of exchange of information uh, and avoidance of any duplication of work. Uh, this will actually probably reach more uh, groups of people who are in high need. The second that I would love this conference to uh, come out with is uh, we have to also uh, go 
uh, away from the traditional ways of delivering aid. I think the time has come for the GCC countries to invest more in innovative and creative ways uh, uh, in, in, in relief and humanitarian work. I think this will maximize the efficiency and also we will uh, reach in a more scientific way. Uh, last but not least, I think it's also time that we have scientists, we have research, we have universities. We should probably direct them to translational research in, in humanitarian and relief work. We should support uh, researchers to uh, come up with resolutions to uh, bring better ways to alleviate the sufferings of a human being. And this will be also coupled with investing in the youth uh, in the volunteer work. The uh, priorities of need are not limited to food. Uh, the priority of need are, goes beyond uh, food. It goes to a better health system, uh, better also uh, education, uh, better uh, to support families to uh, stand on their feet. I think education, we should be more in the innovative way of, uh, for example, uh, tele-education. And even in the health, we should probably maximize the benefit by uh, investing more in newer uh, innovative ways to deliver health to those who are in need, and this will maximize the benefit. So, of course, there's 130 million people that need um, humanitarian assistance, uh, 60 million who are displaced, whether internally or externally. Many of them actually uh, lose, as you said, education. So they lose three, four years as they are being displaced from village to village to village until they actually leave their own country. Because people don't leave their country immediately. They actually try to stay in the country. And so, yes, you find children who have three or four years of lack of education. And you have issues with educational departments in countries where they're not allowing these kids to join the formal educational system. And if they join the informal educational system, it is not actually acknowledged abroad. And so this is one of the biggest issues. And I think what Dr. Rabia was talking about tele-education is really important as long as it's certified and acknowledged. This is where the change happens. The Jordanian monarch King Abdullah II Ibn Al Hussein received at Husseiniya Palace in Jordan the Minister of Interior Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa who was on a visit to Jordan. This comes as part of the strong brotherly relations linking Bahrain and Jordan. The Jordanian monarch welcomed the minister and asked him to convey his greetings to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirming the strong historic relations linking the two kingdoms. The Minister of Interior conveyed to the Jordanian monarch the greetings of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and their wishes for him and for the people of Jordan, prosperity, security and stability. The Minister expressed pride in the relationship witnessed between the two countries and the cooperation in the security field and the constant exchange of expertise. Within the framework of the visit, the Minister of Interior held a meeting with his Jordanian counterpart, Salma Hamid, where the two sides discussed means of bolstering bilateral cooperation, including the field of security. The Minister of Interior affirmed that the relations between the two countries is based on understanding, especially towards issues and challenges of common concern. He highlighted that the care and concern of the two leaderships provides a push for such relations and cooperation, which will lead to achievements that benefits the people of the two countries. He went on to say that his visit to Jordan comes within the framework of a consultation, coordination and increasing cooperation in the field of security and combating terrorism. For his part, the Jordanian Minister of Interior affirmed that Jordan and Bahrain represent a unique model of joint action work, adding that combating terrorism is a must as it poses a threat to countries and societies. He went on to express willingness to provide resources to Bahrain in various fields. On behalf of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa today visited the Gajiriya, Kebel Aram, Batia, Asad Porta, Haredas, Ajay and Sharma families to mark the Festival of Diwali.
His Highness extended the greetings of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to the families and his appreciation for the family's important contributions to the Kingdom's economy. During the visits, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed noted His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's commitment to enshrining moderation, tolerance and pluralism within the Kingdom. He added that these values have contributed to shaping an open and multicultural environment which continues to promote cultural awareness and respect of universal values. He also added that moderation and tolerance are two important values that have been upheld by Islam and that Bahrain's long-established multicultural and diverse society continues to foster religious and cultural understanding. His Highness extended his best wishes to the families, emphasizing that the Kingdom celebrates its diversity as a source of strength and that this diversity is embodied in citizens' and residents' commitment developing Bahrain together. He went on to wish all Bahraini citizens and residents peace and prosperity under the leadership of His Majesty the King. For their part, the families celebrating Diwali expressed their gratitude for His Highness Sheikh Mohammed's visit and expressed appreciation for the continued support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. The families also welcomed the Kingdom's cultural openness and long-standing support for religious rights. The Arabian Gulf Security One exercise hosted for the first time at the Kingdom of Bahrain in the model village continued for the second day in the presence of heads of GCC delegations. The supporting centres at the model village play a vital role such as the medical clinic which has been stocked with medical equipment and provided with technical personnel as well as experienced medical teams from the participating Gulf forces. The clinic has eight ambulances in the unlikely case of injuries as well as medical evacuation aircraft provided by the the Interior Ministry's Police Aviation. The organising committee, under the direct supervision of the Interior Minister, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, was keen on preparing the administrative units in a way that consists with the goals of the exercise throughout its phases.